Romulus and Remus, who were twin brothers and half-gods, are said to have built Rome on the River Tiber in 753 BC. Over the next eight and a half centuries, it grew from a small town of pig farmers into a huge empire that stretched from England to Egypt and completely surrounded the Mediterranean Sea. The Roman Empire took over these lands by attacking them with military power that couldn't be beat, and it kept them by letting them run their own governments. Edward J. Watts, a history professor at the University of California, San Diego, and author of Mortal Republic, The Rise and Fall of the Roman Republic, says that Rome's desire to grow had deep historical roots. How Rome became ruled by tyrants. There's a story that goes back to Roman mythology and prehistory, and it's about how the city grew during the reign of the kings, he says. Martius was one of the first Roman kings from 642 to 617 BC and it is said that he grew the city and added more hills to it during his reign. So the idea that they should grow is deeply rooted in the history of both the Republic and the monarchy that came before it. Rome expands with capture of Etruscan city. The Romans took over the Etruscan city of Veii in 396 BC after many years of fighting. They finally won by digging into the soft, tough rock below the walls while attacking the walls and getting into the city's drainage system to reach the citadel. Even so, when Rome changed from a kingdom to a republic in 509 BC, it was still a small city. In 396 BC, when Rome defeated and took over the Etruscan city of Veii, it was the first time the republic grew in a big way. Mary Beard, a classicist, says that instead of destroying Veii, the Romans let the city run mostly as it had before but under Roman control and with the agreement that Rome could take free men into the Roman army. Watts says that when the Romans took over Veii, it was a big turning point for them because they gained half as much land as they already had. Over the next 250 years and a half, Rome spread all over the Italian peninsula by conquering lands and turning them into allies or giving their people Roman citizenship. The taking over of Italy was really a taking over. It wasn't meant to be a colonial system, he says. Later, in the 1st century BC, it made everyone who was free a Roman citizen. Still, it never gave citizenship to the many slaves who had been brought to Italy through trade, piracy, wars, and other ways. Roman conquests reach overseas. As Rome took over its first lands outside of Europe, it changed its strategy of absorbing other cultures. During the Punic Wars with Carthage, which took place from 264 BC to 146 BC, Rome grew to include several islands in the Mediterranean and the east coast of what is now Spain. But instead of making alliances or expanding its republic into these new areas, Rome made these new areas into provinces and put Roman governors in charge of them. Rome had not planned to take this new land when they first started out. Watts says, They kind of stumble into the First Punic War, but they're happy to take territory as a result. During the First War, Rome drove Carthage out of Sicily. The island then became Rome's first province outside of Italy. During the Second Punic War, Hannibal, a general from Carthage, led his elephants over the Alps and into southern Italy. This put Rome on the defense. Again, Rome won a battle against Carthage and took over some of its land. This time, it was in Spain. But by the time Rome joined the Third Punic War, he says, Rome had decided for sure that it would just take land. And that's very different from what they did even in the third century. Conquering territory in North Africa. This time, Rome destroyed Carthage's capital city in what is now Tunisia and made its people slaves. It also took over all of Carthage's land in North Africa and turned it into a province of Rome. Rome had become the most powerful country in the Mediterranean area. Over the next hundred years, it solidified its position by taking over land along the coasts of modern-day Greece, Turkey, Egypt, and other countries, so that it completely surrounded the Mediterranean Sea. After that, Rome used its huge army to spread out in different waves, sometimes just taking over neighboring states and kingdoms when they fell. In the 60s BCE, Rome expanded into the Middle East and took control of Jerusalem. Rome left most of the old, complicated political systems in place in these eastern lands. Julius Caesar pushes Rome's reach across Europe. Watts said is that General Julius Caesar led Roman soldiers into northwest Europe over the next 10 years, 
mostly because Kaiser wanted to do it and had soldiers who could do it. It's how Kaiser kind of made a name for himself. The Romans did things a little bit differently in these western lands because they didn't have old, complicated political systems. When Rome took over, it tried to keep power in the hands of local leaders while bringing in some Roman ways of doing things. Caesar not only helped Rome take over more of Europe, but he also announced the end of the Roman Republic and the start of the Roman Empire. In 44 BC, after he broke the constitution and made himself dictator for life, senators killed him. When his great-nephew Augustus Caesar made himself emperor in 27 BC, the Republic was over for good. The Roman Empire was now the name for Rome's huge state. The Roman Empire's peak then collapsed. The empire reached its peak in 117 AC when it fortified its borders and reached all the way to England. The empire was at its strongest. After that though, it stopped growing because the people in charge didn't think it was worth the time and effort. The simple structure of the empire, which let provinces run their own affairs, kept things under control until 212, when the Roman Empire gave citizenship to all free people. Free women were still citizens even though they had fewer rights than men. But the expansion of imperial bureaucracy made it harder to run the empire, which was one reason why it started to break up. In 395, all of the empire was ruled by one person for the last time. After that, the western half broke off and fell apart in a hundred years. In the east, the Roman Empire, which was also called the Byzantine Empire, kept going for more than a thousand years.